White Claw doesn't fucking, you know what? White Claw doesn't even deserve that. <laughs> Sorry, White Claw, you gotta earn that shit, okay? I know, I saw, I saw, the, okay, so you know how I've asked Pedialyte to sponsor us, and they're like, I'm yes. sorry, we don't have, and then, and they then, sent you a box, well, not me, which is, but oh, they sent they, someone else a they box, they sent yeah. a shit ton of people boxes, I kept seeing, because we follow them, and so I, I tweeted them, and I was like, feeling kind of left out, and they were like, we'll let you know, I'm like, okay, this is, Everyone, go blow all five of you. I want you to blow <laughs> Pedialyte the fuck up and tell them to send oh, Red Rum and Red Wine podcast a box. Because, hello, this is the Red Rum and Red Wine podcast. The podcast where we talk about murder, mystery, mishaps, and desperately needing someone to sponsor us. Uh, and hi, also, we need hydration. <laughs> Two, Pedialyte. Oh, we're great sponsors. <laughs> And I'm Sarah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Sorry, we just, we're really passionate about hydration. You know, H2O, Pedia. I'll Light. say the rest if you, uh, if you pay me for it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Because <laughs> usually I drink the off-brand anyway, but I'll yes. drink yours if you sponsor us. But yeah, guys, welcome. Welcome to... Our podcast. Uh, if you are hearing this on audio only, stop what you're doing. Unless you're driving a car, please keep going. And go check out our YouTube because uh, we're trying something new. We got a lot of comments about not liking the red screen. So we're trying recording. Does that make sense? I don't know. How, how do you say that you're... Because like with audio, okay. you record too. Yeah, so... Just help me out here. Uh, I got you. <laughs> Mm, love it <laughs> so mm, we got this <laughs> we're professionals we are trying something new um and hopefully it sticks and continues if we get it right if we kind of figure out what we're doing here we have started uh publishing our videos Video. of our mm -hmm. podcast not just our audio um, so if you are just listening to the audio, it should sound about the, the same. same, but if we mention Hopefully. anything about, you know, visuals, it's because we are recording a video and we are going mm -hmm. to try and do that from now on. And yeah. so fingers crossed. Yes. And, uh, our videos will be on our YouTube cause we have gotten some comments about us just only having our audio and, Whatever. We wanted to do videos eventually anyway, so here we are. Here you we get are. to see our faces while we talk. Now you get to see the... I don't know. <laughs> are, I don't think we're ready. I don't think... I, I don't actually think I'm ready for it, but um, yeah, let's put... Let's put some fucking video recording for my future employers to see. Hi. Put on I, face. I only do this on weekends and during responsible hours. Let's get into it. <laughs> Heck yeah. Oh, well, I guess we should talk about what we're drinking first. That's like, so t for those who are new, we talk about morbid shit. Weird shit. Yeah. Mysterious Weird. shit. We creepy talk about shit. things that happen that tend to be on the uh, creepy, spooky, sad, or downright just like fucked up. Yeah, side. So, yeah. <laughs> and we drink while we do it. So grab a drink, grab a snack, and yeah, this is a little bit of a different podcast or episode, though. <laughs> um, we are doing what we call a drunk mystery in history. So we are, it's a little new to the 40 some episodes we've done. So the first week of the month, we do what we call is a drunk mystery in history. We drink a few extra white claws and we talk about shit that we find, uh, extra fucked up in history so. yeah and um mm. yeah so as Kristen mentioned first week of every month 
we just released this one drunk history drunk and mystery in history rather mm-hmm. than our normal two episodes a week so welcome Oop. welcome um. well, welcome mm-hmm. what are you drinking today oh yeah oh oh my beloved three dollar hey. walmart oak leaf oh she's in visual visual and you guys focus. get to see the bottle and the label for the first time not just my mangy description and i can attest best three dollar wine i've had really? oak leaf sponsor oak leaf you know we should oak probably leaf? look them up on socials i'm like hmm I think uh, I think you're gonna get a tag after this one, <laughs> but because hmm. I ingest more oak leaf than I do water, that Probably. is what Jesus would have wanted. So you know what, Jesus, I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So for my story today, I guess let's just get into it. I am going to be doing the drunken mystery on um, how Christmas actually became a child's holiday and how that kind of turned deadly. Oh, why is that? Last fall. Oh, mystery. What's the mystery? Let's find out. <laughs> I'm not used to this. Yes. I f- I feel like I'm recording uh, an episode for the first time again. So, if we sound extra cheesy, that's why. Please forgive us. Me. Yeah. And if if okay. <laughs> Kristen bought me a lava lamp for my birthday. Mm -hmm. I haven't mentioned that yet um, on the podcast because we have like this kind of inside joke from that one episode about my mind being like a lava lamp. Yeah, go check out that episode if you want to be a part of the inside joke. It's called like a lava lamp. And (laughs) so I have the lava lamp sitting like over there on a dresser and I literally can't stop staring at it. It's, and it fits the green lights. I was like, oh, it's just such an aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I if you just catch me like stuff. staring that way, I'm so sorry. <laughs> if you catch me um, not staring at the camera, it's because I'm staring at myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> or at my notes. <laughs> uh, okay. So before I get started, I wanted to give... <clears throat> A huge shout out to Absolute History. They are actually on the YouTube and they gave me the idea for the subject um, when I was just kind of like clicking around on their series. So they actually have a series called Hidden Killers, which highly 10 out of 10 recommend. They have a crap ton of episodes about all different types of stuff. Um, So yeah, I'll have it linked in the resources down below, but definitely. Oh, excuse (laughs) me. Whoa. Uh, definitely go check them out if you are on the YouTube as well. <clears throat> the YouTube. I'm starting off with uh, kind of a bummer. Uh, it's just some historical facts, but some we'll get into it. So, uh, you know, before 19th century, for those who did not know, uh, the world was filled with child labor. <laughs> like, yeah. we, we worked them kids uh I'll literally to like to death <laughs> so, um, we liked ch- child labor laws um before you know ethics became a thing because we would typically pay children less money and oh, yeah and they were nimble and small and mm-hmm, had they could energy into those <laughs> tiny little places and because they were you know children they wouldn't think to make any type of union or anything against right. the company for like treating them bad it's just so fucked up uh, <laughs> they're like yeah don't gotta worry about that so hire all the child babies um and it was also a law that if you worked as a child you couldn't attend school or like get an education so it was essentially this kind of way to make this you know cynical cycle that we always have of like we want to keep them in poverty so just don't let cynical cycle of mishaps <laughs> exactly check out that episode as well <laughs> um but yeah it was just basically another way to keep the classes in check and basically keep them in poverty and it would uh, take a lord so right now i'm talking about the uk i will get into the u.s later um and as for other places well 
I'm not speaking for all other places, but a lot of other places still do have child labor laws, unfortunately. So take with that what you will, but don't look at us because we're not any better. You will find out why. <laughs> so in 1851, we have a Lord Anthony Ashley Cooper who becomes Lord Shaftesbury in 1851. And he decides that's kind of fucked up what we're doing. Um, I don't really like that. Maybe we should not have, you know, children working for adults. She thought. Yes, um, it, the thought was originally inspired. I oh, was originally inspired by a major catastrophe that had happened in 1838, where 26 children between the ages of seven and through 17 would die after a coal mining pit named the Huskar pit flooded after this like freak storm just like brushed in and there wasn't enough time to get these kids out and so after all of these children died I'm assuming that the public got pretty angry (laughs) and was like oh what the fuck um and so they were like well shit maybe we should do something about this So Queen Victoria would order an inquiry that was led by the Lord Shaftesbury. And this would prohibit all underground work for women, boys, girls, anyone who is under the age of 10. um, (laughs) And women, sorry. (laughs) Well, under the age of 10, it's like, okay, you're 11. You can climb down holes and mine shit. (laughs) Well, and it... (laughs) So... (laughs) Sorry. And this is mind you just for underground work so if you had a business like if you had a farm let's say and you needed someone to do the farm work for you you could easily get your seven-year-old to go out and do that because it's not technically underground work so he fortunately would push for harder laws i don't know if that's or like exactly at what year that that happened Um, But at some point, it would be made in the UK mandatory for anyone under the age of 10 to go into an education system. And if anyone that was age 10 to 14 happened to be working, that they only be employed for a half of of a day. So that they could, I guess, like go to school or be educated. I... (laughs) Sorry, I said that weird, but I tried to find the year. Uh, I couldn't get the exact year. Sorry, I didn't do that hard of research on it, but um, it was sometime after 1851. Unlike the UK, though, uh, us Americans, sorry, if you don't know, we're uh, we're from America. (laughs) (laughs) We didn't catch on quite as quick, okay? It it took us some time. I'm, I'm... it's actually kind of embarrassing to uh america is really embarrassing sometimes okay yeah i'm actually kind of embarrassed when i like since the fucking birth of america embarrassing the birth of america was embarrassing 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 Uh, because child labor laws in the states uh you know essentially carried the agricultural and handicraft economy on their little baby backs so a lot of farms would have like six seven kids so the kids could then proceed to go and work on the farm the more kids you have the more free labor you have the more hands you have Mm -hmm. and uh we we really took that to heart so when the industrial revolution came we transitioned into moving kids into factories and you have to think this is America 1900s. Nothing is regulated. There are no safety codes. Uh, unclean, cramped, tiresome. Yikes. You're you are going to be shocked with the shit that I'm saying that happens in 2007. So yeah, only imagine the 1900s. Yeah, it gives you an idea. What the but, fuck? Uh, fun fact, not so fun fact. In 1900, 18% of all American workers were under the age of 16. 18%. So uh, it's, it's not like a huge number. It's enough. It's to, enough. That's what I was going to It's more say. than one. It's more than zero. That's all it's, it needs to be. I, you know, even under if it was 16, like three, I would have been like, okay. I, didn't, I don't <laughs> even think I had my first job at 16. I worked at Bill Miller's for my first job. <laughs> Mine was Palm Beach Tan. <laughs> mm. I would have rather done that. Oh, they made me 
lift the hot bins. I hated that. Yeah. I mean, they I got free me tanning. Good, <laughs> I would have rather had that. <laughs> um, and so yes, uh, you did hear the year that I just said, right? So, like I had previously said, 1851 was when Shant. Oh, so, I'm so sorry, I forgot his name. He had like six names, right? He did. <laughs> It, well, his ma- his uh, Earl name is not like his real name. His Lord name, I don't know. Yeah, Shaf- Shaftesbury, <laughs> Lord Shaftesbury, <laughs> came into the picture in 1851. Um, yeah, 1900s. We're still talking about child labor laws in the United States. <clears throat> in fact, it would take until 1904 when the National Child Labor Committee was organized that we started to see people make an attempt, not even really put any regulation on it or put any laws to say, hey, but they were just like, this is pretty bad. Maybe we should start doing something about this. In 1938 is when we finally see any type of limitation on child labor laws and children under the age of 16 were prohibited from manufacturing or mining jobs. So keep in mind any other business that is not under manufacturing or mining, they can still work. Um, And it would take until 1949 to stop all businesses from hiring are we baby children to do the work of the adults holy crap uh yeah and like i had mentioned in the beginning there are unfortunately still countries to this day that still use child labor laws um probably a lot of companies that we would be shocked and surprised to hear about Closed captions, please don't type. <laughs> <laughs> they don't type what you don't say. Oh. <laughs> it's just like the closed caption muttering incoherently. <laughs> Speaking. <laughs> have you seen that thing where like you have Sarah subtitles Rambling. on and it's supposed to tell you what it says in another language, but then it just says like speaking Russian and not actually what they say. I, th- I think you can actually, there's a, uh, something I read that you can like hire people to type the captions for you. Or I guess if you get big enough, like sometimes your fans will do it. I literally don't know anything about this, but apparently it's like maybe a thing. I don't really know. Maybe someone tell us about it. Um, and the fans will do like really funny captions that it's like oh i don't know i think i've seen on like a pewdiepie video but he has like 100 million followers so obviously (laughs) our our, um audience grew from like 14 to 19 this week wow wow yeah uh please don't look at our viewership and judge us based on that you know we're we're more than our subscriber count and we don't have any child labor it is just too (laughs) Two 27 year olds acting like fucking 17 year olds. I'm 22. Uh, Sorry, I'm 18. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, actually, this is child labor. I'm fucking 16. (sighs) Man, where's my money? (laughs) Also, we're not getting paid. So technically. Also, also, (laughs) when when are y'all going to start giving us money for this hard earned content we get? Hello. For the annoying content we put out. (laughs) For the talking cabbages that are put out on this internet. You know, for being a talking cabbage, I feel like that's a great skill. You know, (laughs) not many cabbages can talk. (laughs) And the fucking head of uh, cabbages. Okay, I'm so sorry. I know this is um, a little off topic, but I just watched a new. Oh, honey, (laughs) we've been off topic. (laughs) (laughs) I just watched a new Christmas movie on Netflix. Um,. Is it the one with Nina Dorbe? No, but I did watch that one after you talked Isn't about it. So, so cute. cute. So um, cool. What is it called? I forgot, but it's about like a boy named Nicholas, aka Christmas. And, oh. and it's just this like little boy who goes and finds an elf village. And it's basically it describes how like St. Nicholas or like Santa Claus became Santa Claus. Oh, cool. It's so it's super like cute. Rom-com. No, it's... I could watch that, though. Yeah, and it's it's um, it's um, not like a cheesy, you know, Hallmark 
I love Hallmark Christmas movies, don't get me wrong, but it's not like a cheesy Christmas movie. It's like an actual, you know, like. I could do that then. Yeah. yeah. Don't give me a romance movie right now because I'm depressed. Okay. Sorry. Back to the. <laughs> back to sorry. The show. I was like, I could go on and on and on. <laughs> we can go on. Do you I was, I was going. Podcast about Christmas movies. <laughs> I was <laughs> going somewhere it. with that Christmas movie. It related, I promise. It's but okay, I lost I it. People want to hear it. <laughs> I lost it. It's okay. We'll find it later. Probably not. Yeah. Oh, child labor, elves. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Make that connection. I got that. I got that. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> Those child labor elves. <laughs> So, speaking of child labor <laughs> now the sudden lack of child labor laws I know there's like a disparity we'll talk about it a little bit but this lack of child labor laws in the UK uh, I tried to find evidence of it in the US I'm not 100% sure but this one woman Kate Williams she's a historian she seemed very official and she said that when these child labors stopped labor laws stopped that is actually when we switched from making christmas i guess like pagan holiday ritual as we would maybe see it and shifting it to a child's festival like a holiday where children can be celebrated they can be spoiled they can be given a lot of gifts and that's kind of where this fucked up tradition starts of like the kids waking up at five in the morning and jumping on the parents bed being like i can't wait to open all my presents yeah it's because we highly abused our kids and um, (laughs) they deserve our forgiveness one morning of this is our we're sorry (laughs) (laughs) sorry we fucked up (laughs) merry christmas (laughs) Happy Hanukkah. Merry Chrysler. Happy holidays. Sorry. I was going to say happy bat mitzvah, but that's... It's not the Hanukkah, right? No. I mean, Hanukkah is Jewish, bat mitzvah is Jewish. It's it's when you come of age. I get that. I get that. But little did we know that this new... Sorry we fucked up by giving you child labor laws turns into now sorry we fucked up by giving you poisonous toys that could actually kill you so let's get into that yeah (laughs) Um, okay yeah sorry i told you this was a morbid ish podcast well i was hoping it would be a little morbid oh yeah i'm not gonna be just historical i'm definitely gonna tell you about how some kids died so okay (laughs) so in the uk during the 18 i'm joking I'm sorry for those who oh, are me new. Too. We're, we we use laughter to accommodate trauma. Okay, so this trauma it's it's actually kind of bad. So in the UK during the 1880s through the 90s annually, so like for a decade, this would go on. Um, 154,000 infants would die annually. I am not. I should have looked. I know. How many a day? Hey, Google. (laughs) What is 154,000 divided by 365? 154,000 divided by 365. How many? Approximately 421.92. 421.92. What? A day. Baby, that's a lot. Oh, baby. Let me put that into perspective whoa thank you for doing that shit that's a lot sorry fuck goosebumps yeah that's a lot oh my god wow what the fuck yeah i was even about to say like i i don't know what the population was at that time but screw the population that's a that's a lot of dead babies whoa i'm gonna uh, get demonetized for saying that but it's so like Obvi- fucking obviously if you saw or if your child survived doted upon doted upon and by this time in the uk the child labor laws were already gone so, yeah, so wait christmas how are they was, dying 
this is very much a uh, check out the drunk mystery in history where i talk about why hand washing is so important but we didn't have the education back then so i want to say that uh oh my god i'm so sorry dude you died in a mental institution i can't even remember your name and you invented hand washing but that dude yeah he uh i want to say it was this it literally didn't become a thing until then so like our our education of bacteria as you will get into so the toys they were getting were basically infected and shit not even the toys but it's just some because uh this was infants so under the age of one so you're having kids not even making it to toddlerhood you're having kids not even making it to being of age where you would go and work okay so also kids- i'm so sorry i think i did good. the math wrong because you said 154,000 kids died in oh the, my God, in the decade no per year annually. oh shit okay you i did, did the, math, the right. math right yeah yeah okay sorry no it, it's uh they were dying like so under the age of one it's yeah it, it's literally just like lack of knowledge of the bacteria of everything w- sick like disease illness i know like probably babies, like obviously not clean water or shit like that too okay so um <laughs> thank you for bringing that up because yeah. I did read in, like, a mother's journal, or, like, it was a brochure on how to, I guess, like, uh, it's like the, oh my fucking god, I can't think right now. It's like the what to expect what when you're expecting book back in the 1800s for the UK, and it would tell moms that you could drink, like, 20 pints of beer a day, but you couldn't drink gin. Speaking of Take the great again, I'm so sorry, but like, in um, you probably haven't seen the episode yet. I mean, there's different episodes where like oh, one episode she fucking trips shrooms, another episode no, she, she takes gets that, drunk. She obviously, takes that fucking line of gunpowder and lavender, and then she's like taking shots the whole time and she's pregnant. Yes, this is it's it's very like we're talking about the great on Hulu if you want to check it out, but it's very much like. People back in the day were fucking drinking, smoking. I mean, uh, even in the 1950s, they were drinking and smoking while pregnant. Even in the fucking 1970s, I mean, even now, let's be real. Even now, let's be (laughs) more real. Not us. It's not us, but But. others. Others, yes. And whatever, we're not like, whatever, you do you. I mean, mean, definitely, if you're pregnant, don't uh, condone on taking any type of drugs. Other than the recommended <laughs> glass of... Oh, okay, cutting that up. <laughs> A half <laughs> glass of wine every six months or something. <laughs> every, every like, other day. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but I've never been pregnant, obviously. I've only been once. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but not that it, I've known of. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's so annoyed. <laughs> but it's just very much... Um, times were different back then and not a lot of kids survived so the kids that would survive would be like yeah you would fucking spoil the shit out of them you would dote on them and you would give them toys that it's hard because you want to give your child everything but then you give them something that they want and little do you know that it's what's fucking killing them it's just terrible so due to this certain uh Due to the sudden surge in toys becoming popular, you would really see toy manufacturers producing a lot of wooden toys. And to this day, the best known preserver of wood is lead. Now, for those who don't know, lead is extremely bad for you. <laughs> it's in certain amounts, toxic. yes. In uh, in what I read and in what some of the people were saying in the thing that I read, in technically any amount, no amount is good for you. I don't know why we legally allow it then, because as I will get into one of the cases later on, like it, there is a legal amount that is allowed in toys. Uh, and but other stuff too. Other products, yes. Uh, but according to this one 
woman who went on the documentary she was like any amount that you are exposed to is bad so Uh, you're telling me when i ate pencils in elementary school i'm dead oh yeah i i have a fun fact that i'm gonna spit out later on that one Mm -hmm. okay yeah i I didn't eat um, pencils but i swear to god like it's all it's over you. You get pencil lead everywhere. Yeah. And what? a lot of the a lot of the children back then, um, the parents would be like, oh, they're having a really bad tam- temper tantrum or like, oh, maybe they have ADHD. What we say now, it's like, no, they had lead poisoning and that it was just the symptoms of it. Um, maybe I have lead poisoning. But during the time we knew that lead was toxic to humans. As we were putting it in the wood preserver or uh, using it as a wood preserver. But the the idea behind it and I guess why it was allowed was that someone thought that if we just used it as paint for the wood, there would be no way for it to be transmitted into a child, which at this point I'm like, I know that you don't have a child because you don't understand that a kid puts literally anything into their fucking mouth Mm -hmm. so what began to happen was that lead does not unlike a lot of other poisons in nature have a bitter taste to it so when the kids would put the wood in their mouth and begin to suck on it there wouldn't be any type of taste or reaction for them to go like oh that's gross Gross, i don't need this in my mouth yeah they would just be like "Mm, keep sucking on it (laughs) or if something else if they weren't putting it in their mouth the paint would chip off due to normal wear and tear if it happened to get on their clothes or if it happened to get on their hands and then they later rub again in their mouth (laughs) yeah and like you had said it is not just toys that this is happening to i'm talking about like you can still walk into a old house in the uk and if you do not have a little like radi or like a radioactive whatever like you can get lead poisoning it's not a radioactive detector whatever but you like under you get what i'm saying you can still be exposed to high amounts of lead if you go into some of these older houses because none of this shit was regulated we just i mean and it's like still in a lot of our water isn't it you're gonna find well yeah and uh, in our toys too (laughs) so (sighs) and unfortunately for the children that were exposed to these high amounts of lead it is way more damaging to a child than it is an adult because lead really focuses on the body's nervous system and for children their nervous system isn't even fully developed so when you start to see the effects of lead poisoning like i said you see the major temper tantrums it leads to like a lack of rationality you just you start to you get really irritable really quickly. It's like you you just you can't be a fully functioning human. And it's sad because we weren't able to test the amounts of lead that these children were exposed to. We really don't know how greatly these kids were affected. So we're really putting out a generation where we don't know this generation's full potential because we have severely inhibited it by exposing them to huge amounts of lead and to things that we thought were completely normal and completely okay to give to our kids and family members i mean and and to this day it's still a problem like i'll in there was in the u.s a lead poisoning that happened in the 70s and like the karens and the crazy people that you're seeing right now like it said that these are some of the people that were affected by lead poisoning like it's a rumor that because i'm not (laughs) i'm gonna get canceled for that but a lot of the lead poisoning like there was a spike in teen pregnancy in the 90s it had to do with some lead poisoning that was going on like when you see lead leak into societies you see society start to 
somewhat crumble. It's like the, misbehave. <laughs> it, it's the it's the entire reason Holy why shit. Roman society crumbled is because they of put lead? lead in everything. We have known since the Roman society. We found out because of them known. that lead was bad. <laughs> yeah. But to this day, we still continue to put it into items. And it's like, I don't know if we do it to like dumb down our society or fucking what, but we allow it. And it is, it's crazy when the government knows what's going on and they still fucking like, I'm going to get it. it, it yeah. No, in the 2000s, this crossed. is happening. What the fuck? So, yeah, sorry. Sorry. No, no, no. We're getting into it. It's getting interesting. I know. <laughs> The most common sign of lead poisoning that would happen um, would be this gray, somewhat palette that would appear in the mouth of the victims, like right around the top right here. And they would be what we would refer to as Burton's lines because there was a physician named Henry Burton that discovered this in 1840. But unfortunately, by the time you discovered these gray lines these symptoms he had them in himself. your body mm-hmm, <gasps> from the lead poisoning wait <laughs> wait oh. what did you say I, was, I said like by the time he realized the symptoms did he have the symptoms oh i don't oh. think he had them oh, okay no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't hear you right um but it was said that by the time the blue gray lines had appeared by the base of your gums that there you couldn't it was too late for you Mm. you couldn't do anything to reverse the damage that was done to you it's hard i I could definitely assume that you could possibly die from lead poisoning but from what i understand it's very much something that just like fucks you up inhibit inhibits you whatever yeah it just like fucks you up mentally yeah well probably yeah multiple and yeah so like i said despite the knowledge of these children coming with these gray lines on their teeth from fucking lead poisoning the government ignored it didn't really do anything about it uh so in fact when white lead was banned from indoor paint products in sweden poland czechoslovakia austria spain finland and norway in the 1920s the uk did not take suit in banning it until the 1970s about 50 years later and about a hundred years after the original problem of lead poisoning was originally discovered hmm what about in the U.S.? Uh, yeah, don't don't don't, don't, don't say us. We're, we're still figuring it out. We're still figuring it out. Okay? <sighs> we're all that. <sighs> so yeah, and I know. I'm sorry. I I talk some shit about the U.K. Sit down, sit down, angry people, because <laughs> here comes the U.S. to <laughs> show you how some dangerous toys actually work, because <laughs> you don't actually know shit. I'm about to tell you everything, because <laughs> I don't know why. So someone decided in 1950, we just got rid of child labor laws. What would be great other than to make a toy that shows kids how nuclear plants work. Yeah, let's explain that. Yeah, I'm intrigued. In 1950, Gilbert's U-238 Atomic Energy Lab was dropped in stores everywhere in the States. (laughs) This was basically a kit that allowed children to create nuclear reactions using radioactive material. Okay, so not baking soda and what no. is it, vinegar? I don't know. I never it's made a volcano. This ain't, your, this ain't your volcano explosion, baby. We're talking. We're talking about a cloud chamber where you can actually witness alpha particles traveling up to twelve thousand miles per second. For our Europe listeners, don't worry. Wikipedia did the conversion for me. Nineteen million meters per second. I'm gonna ask my mom. If she has ever heard of that or seen it, did she do it? <laughs> Mom, did you partake? 
fifty because she was born in fifty two. It, it 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 really wasn't. Thankfully, this thing only lasted a year <sighs> and was pulled off the shelves, and like only five hundred were sold. But still, this thing. Okay, so this thing also had a spin theroscopic what the fuck ever hi if you're new here i don't know how to pronounce things but it basically gave you the results of whatever radioactive disintegration was going on in your chemical reaction (laughs) and it also had an electroscope that would measure the radioactive material that your child is actually playing with i'm i'm freaking out there was one small there was one small warning it was like (laughs) don't break the seal (laughs) they gave one warning they said don't break the seals on any of the materials because because if you break the seal it's not going to harm you it's going to alter the radioactive, like, uh, results of your fucking chemical reaction test. But it would harm you. Yes. Yes. It would cause copious amounts of cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank God it, it was taken off the shelves. And like I said, only 500 were sold I because of that it's probably hard for me to get a diagnostic on out of those 500 what the results well, like, were. I wonder because what the happened government to make them only sell 500 sets and to make them pull it because <laughs> something had to have happened. <laughs> yeah. And they buried the shit out of that. It, I left I left this out. There was a glass blowing kit. Where you had to work with like 500 degrees Fahrenheit, 600 degrees Fahrenheit. I left that one out because actually it didn't, it didn't make the cut. (laughs) If you want a part two, please let me know. Yeah. So next up we have a good nineties toy. So we're moving a little bit up. This is the Cabbage Patch Snack Time Dolls. Uh, So this was released as, you know, the Cabbage Patch doll, but it chewed on plastic foods. Except when the motorized mouth was done chewing on the plastic foods, it would continue to chew, uh, sometimes chewing on the kid's fingers. (laughs) And when that wasn't good enough, gnawing on the kid's hair. (gasps) So the... It was said that, like, once this toy started, started gnawing, it had to be, like forcibly shut off in order to stop it like one parent was like i had to like break it to get it to stop uh so there was an incident where a three-year-old girl's hair was ripped from the root and i'm sorry i'm really not trying to laugh and left her completely bald on the back of her head why did she have the doll back there well, it probably was, was it her like, hair was long okay, and it just like true long hair. Uh, could you imagine the mom as soon as like, you said cabbage patch? I was like, oh my god, did I play with this toy? Did but I no, it? I never. I I found I didn't cabbage have that patches kind of not cute. Did not have that one, but Mattel would issue a recall and give a $40 refund for anyone who had purchased the doll. Uh, but by the time the recall had been issued, around 500000 had been sold. Huh. So quite a, quite a lot. There were quite a lot of instances of children's hair being ripped out. <laughs> uh, this one had me fucking fucked up. Okay, second to last one. And then the last one really got me. I had to throw it in because of who it was. This one is really popular and it surprised the fuck out of me because I do not remember reading this in the newspapers at all. So in 2007, we have our beloved aqua dots. Do you remember those? Aqua dogs? Aqua dots. You would make the aqua art dots. with the dots. And it, I just saw it on all the commercials. I wanted it so bad, but my mom never bought it for me. I may, I probably saw it in commercials, but I pro- I don't remember. It, good. <laughs> I wanted it. <laughs> I wanted it. I had the fucking intrusive, 
it's not intrusive yeah it's intrusive right when you just like randomly want to do it anyways i wanted it i needed it thank god i did not have it because uh the u.s had to recall about 4.2 million of these popular bee toys when it was discovered that after swallowing these aqua dots there was some kind of chemical in the dot that would make children vomit after they swallowed it but it, and when it, was we, a, it wasn't meant to be ingested though it was like an art thing right no, yeah, but if it but was, like, a simple still... plastic bead, it would just, like, pass. Okay. It wouldn't cause someone to vomit. Because kids swallow weird shit all the time. Like, I just heard a TikTok about someone passing an AirPod. So, <laughs> I, like, you can, your stomach can handle some stuff that you don't, that it could, you don't think it could handle. It could handle it. Uh, but not this aqua beat though and so scientists were obviously like what the fuck that's actually really concerning so what's going on because a two-year-old ended up swallowing several dozen and slipped into a comatose state while another fell into a coma and had to be hospitalized for five days it's hard for me to get information on if there was like any prolonged effects from this but i was able to find that like the kids were okay i don't think that anyone died from this but when scientists were like what the fuck is going on what's in this bead they found a chemical that i don't think should have ever been in there because the chemical in question was gamma hydroxy buttery i said that wrong aka jhb aka the fucking date rape drug there were date rape drugs in these fucking aqua dots and so when children would ingest them they would date rape themselves and in high doses, it can lead to you comatosing yourself. Been there. Uh, <laughs> but it wasn't planned. Well, yeah, no. And I was not two years old either. Jesus Christ. I no. wonder, like, why in the world or how, what, why, where, when does that make that product The work? CNN article like, why is it I necessary? read blamed it on it being a Chinese made product <laughs> of course a lot of these and like the next one too they're like oh it's a chinese made product yeah like, we didn't okay. just start blaming china with covid yeah. okay it's, it's been going on okay forever. when did regulation become a thing it's when we started testing shit so obviously someone's not testing it literally someone in california for my next one that i'm talking about my last one the only reason that someone discovered it was they and this happened in 2007 when someone actually cares about doing random sporadic testing. But in California, they took a bunch of random games and tested it for lead. And what do you know? Everybody makes mistakes because our last toy. <laughs> yes, you did hear that right. I am talking about our beloved teenage idol, Hannah Montana, and her pop star card game. No way yes so some random person in california decided to take a bunch of her pop star card games and test them for lead and i believe he took like 27 sorry i did not write this down but out of the 27 like nine of them it, so it wasn't all but more than one which is enough were discovered to contain at least 75 times the legal amount of lead that is allowed in game parts. <gasps> and we just regulated that shit right onto the shelves. Holy shit. And so, yeah. But that, don't worry. Don't worry. That was not the only... Uh, slippage that happened because in 2007 alone some 42 recalls would happen due to toys being produced with too much lead in them in 2007 but not our hannah montana pop car starred game so little pop star card game though because due to a loophole 
where the toxic levels were found in the vinyl and not the paint of the game, it's allowed. And so the game was still sold. I wonder if Miley knows about this. I don't know if she does. Don't think she does. And if she does, she's staying quiet on it. Miley, let's hear your thoughts. I wonder if Hannah told her. I'm sorry, guys. The best of both worlds. Bad allergies. I don't think think she did. Like, y'all get to see me blow my nose now. (laughs) You get to see all the mishaps in action. The sneezes, the coughs, the... The vape hits. The vape hit that I'm literally about to take. So, yeah. Yeah, that is my fucking... Holy crap. That's my mystery on why child labor laws turned into Christmas Day celebration turned into us creating games that killed our children. Okay. Can um, Does Amazon sell lead testing kits? Because I want to test these hands right now. Okay, the <laughs> fucked up thing is, is that I don't think that you can test. There's like not a test. Oh, available. they took it out of our fucking hands because they don't. I don't. Oh my and that's God. why I get so confused. It's like one, we say that lead is bad in any amount. And then two, I read in some article that it's hard for you to test the amounts of lead. So, I'm the, but then I'm like, I, I, I read something wrong there. I read something wrong there. But yeah, don't lick paint. <laughs> don't. Don't buy anything in America because it may have lead in it. <laughs> yeah, so uh Wow. Thank you, Kristen. I wasn't expecting it to go that direction. Yeah, I when I first started doing the research, I wasn't either, and then uh, I became highly concerned for every single toy that I have ever bought my child. Holy ever. crap. I definitely did a deep sweep. I was like, not only do I now have to worry about choking hazards, I have to worry about my child getting fucking day raped <laughs> before he even goes out to the bars. Yeah. Holy crap. Mm. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Alrighty. Alrighty, Rooney. Alrighty, well, Rooney. Well, I'm super excited because you, uh, you pumped your story up, so I'm ready to be mystified, right? Well, I hope so. You may have heard I it before. It. Um... Mine is just about a strange phenomenon that happens, that has happened throughout history multiple times, but my specific story happened on Christmas Eve in 1885. So, we are on a farm near the Seneca, Illinois area, Christmas Eve, 1885, Matilda Rooney, Her husband, Patrick Rooney, and their farmhand, John Larson, were hanging out drinking, enjoying the eve of Christmas. They all had several drinks before, you know, retiring to bed uh, that night. So the farmhand, John, I guess, lived with his employers, Matilda and Patrick, So, that night, John awoke in the middle of the night, disturbed by a coughing fit, and he was kind of struggling to breathe, but he kind of shrugged it off and ended up, like, falling back asleep eventually. But when he woke up that next morning, which was Christmas morning, he noticed some soot on his pillow, you know, like some ash soot. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, So, like I said, he lived with Matilda and Patrick, so when he woke up and noticed the soot, he made his way downstairs, and uh, to his surprise, he found Patrick dead in his bedroom. I assume asleep in his bed. He didn't, it wasn't specified where in the bedroom Patrick was dead, but I assume in his bed. Matilda wasn't in the bedroom or anywhere to be found. So, John made his way to the kitchen, and what did he see? I'll tell you what it wasn't. It wasn't the remnants of cookies that Santa Claus had destroyed, but the remnants of Matilda. There was a large blackened hole in the kitchen floor, 
and near the hole was the charred remains of a human foot or feet. Just a foot? I'm, I'm pretty sure it was just like one oh. foot, but it could have been both. Wait, but there's more, right? A pile of ash was left inside the hole and along with the charred foot, that was all that was left of Matilda. <gasps> no. She had been reduced to about 12 pounds of ash. That's a fucked up fact. <laughs> the circumstances of what happened were shocking and mind-boggling because there was no damage to the home or any furniture from any kind of fire or whatever. So, And you said she was found in a hole in the house? Well... I mean, not like her body, but just ash. So there was a hole in the kitchen floor, and the charred remains of a foot or feet were near the hole. And then there was just like the ash of Matilda's body in the hole of the kitchen floor hole. What the fuck are you about to tell me? <laughs> Speculation. That John Larson may have murdered Patrick and Matilda was definitely circulating. But it just seemed impossible to start a fire like that without damaging any of the rest of the house. And there wasn't any kind of other reason to suspect foul play. Okay. So well, it... He's never... Sorry. He's never, like done anything sketch so sorry what was the relation to this guy again to the couple so john was the farm hand for matilda and patrick Got so it. they were an elderly couple and um john so was just, their farm hand. yeah very obvious he's the go-to right suspect. like why wouldn't you yeah um but it actually was determined that patrick passed away from smoke inhalation so, a fire of some sort would explain, you know, Patrick passing away from that, but it would also explain John Larson's coughing fit that he awoke from in the night. Maybe, yeah. He slept on the second floor of the home behind a closed door, so that would kind of explain why maybe he didn't perish like Patrick did. Mm-hmm. But it seemed like Matilda, on the other hand, was the victim of spontaneous human combustion. That's what I thought was going to happen, but what the fuck? I know. But then, uh, so her husband was just collateral damage for her randomly deciding to combust on Christmas Eve? That's a fucked up way to go. <laughs> I don't know if she just decided to, <laughs> Like, honey, you couldn't be doing that while we were doing it. <laughs> um, so, I don't know. You may be asking, what is spontaneous human combustion? I'm I had, um, yeah, I had kind of heard of this before. I believe I've heard this story maybe um, from another podcast. I don't podcast, think that but. I've heard of this particular story because I feel like I would have definitely remembered the husband, uh, but I have definitely have heard of a combustion yeah in humans yes mm -hmm. spontaneously so, <laughs> spontaneous human combustion or someone bursting into flames without being ignited by an external source has been a topic of debate for centuries <gasps> what the fuck i know accounts of spontaneous human combustion date back to 1641 but gained more recognition when charles dickinson killed off one of his main characters in his novel Bleak House by spontaneous human combustion. Maybe it's like a sleep paralysis where like <laughs> once you know Don't tell me exists, that. you can spontaneously combust. <laughs> Fair uh, warning, don't listen to this podcast if you think you're going to combust. Yeah. Well, I'll get into <laughs> fair <laughs> warnings later. Uh so, when Charles Dickinson was challenged by critics about spontaneous human combustion, like being bullshit, basically, uh, Charles pointed out research showing historical cases of the phenomenon. Mm. 
In more recent years, cases of spontaneous human combustion have been suspected when fire departments and police find themselves with a burnt corpse with undamaged surroundings, such as the building they're in or the furniture surrounding them, etc. Yeah. Human bodies are composed of mostly water, as we may know, making its only highly flammable properties fat tissue and methane gas. So the possibility of spontaneous human combustion seems very low, and many scientists totally dismiss this whole phenomenon. They basically say that human error is most likely the cause of such cases, such as, you know, like a lit cigarette catching you on fire or a match. Cases where it's not. You know. uh, Is there anything found around her that she could have potentially? I mean, I know there was a hole in the kitchen and the kitchen maybe has some fire, but like. It didn't specify if she was like next to the stove or the hole is next to the stove or if there was a fireplace. It didn't specify, but you can imagine some sort of fire i guess being easily equated you're in the kitchen and in the 1800s there was probably a fireplace in the kitchen so her body was over it and she said i'm done (laughs) (laughs) in cases where spontaneous human combustion seems possible victims are often found near a fire source making it likely that someone accidentally set themselves on fire while doing something what if they farted too hard (laughs) It was just the toot that went too far. You know what? That's a total possibility that I didn't because include in methane. my notes. <laughs> oh my god. And what if it she was, was literally gassy. like they were just a little too gassy that day? And oh. It's like, oh my god. I think Eek. I figured it out, guys. <laughs> oh my god. She uh, just tooted a bit. Oh, sorry. It's I'm okay. Sorry. You're a valid human. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Lady that combusted. <laughs> So, since victims are often found near a fire source, it kind of makes it seem likely that someone could accidentally set themselves on fire while doing something like smoking or lighting something with a lit fire, playing with fire, (laughs) who knows, Uh, Mm -hmm. you know, it goes on. So, apparently, the human body would have to reach a temperature of about 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit or 1,648 Celsius degrees in order to be reduced to ashes. So, those who are not skeptic of uh, spontaneous human combustion point out that bacteria, obesity, static electricity, stress... And last but not least, and more commonly, excessive alcohol consumption. Fuck, I'm gonna blow up. (laughs) Consumption equals combustion, y'all. I'm stressed. (laughs) I know I have enough liquor in me to kill a small child. Oh, man. Well, it was nice knowing y'all. Bye. I mean... I think God hates me too much to let me spontaneously combust into ash, so I think I'll live to tell another day. I don't know. I should have tried to find, like, a more recent case of it, maybe to make this a little longer and more relative, but (laughs) it's definitely a thing, so... I definitely am concerned that I'm going to combust now. In 2012, a British biologist, Brian J. Ford, shared his findings from experiments he had done uh, with or about combustion. Mm -hmm. So, according to Brian J. Ford, a buildup of acetone in the body could lead to spontaneous combustion. Mm -hmm. And a buildup of acetone can be caused by alcoholism, diabetes, or certain types of diets. So, it's very possible that alcohol consumption caused Matilda Rooney to spontaneously combust. I don't want to hear. We literally have a podcast with the name wine in it. Sarah, you're trying to tell me. I know. 
So next time you're like drinking by a fire or something. So maybe now put your drink down. Just be careful. <laughs> Think about your life choices. Maybe just step away from the fire and keep drinking. I don't know. <laughs> step away from the stove. Step away from anything in life that could make you combust and you'll you'll be good. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. If the other things we talk about don't kill you first. <laughs> uh, but a local legend <laughs> was that Matilda suffered divine retribution for drinking too much on Christmas Eve. So Bitch. that's what caused her to perish. I should have been killed like five Christmas Eves ago. <laughs> yeah. Shit. People are mean. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how much she actually drank. Like, was it a lot? Probably. It didn't specify. And but it doesn't mean that she should get shamed for it. Right. I, I assume they were drinking liquor, even though it didn't specify. And, you know, we most sources said they drank several drinks before retiring to bed. So we literally talked about how pregnant women were allowed to have beer. So. Shit. Maybe if they thought of her as an alcoholic maybe she kind of was fuck i don't know did not i don't think that, that was, was it though i don't think they saw her as an alcoholic they just figured the way the the reason why that's like getting that's today's cirrhosis of the liver it's like <laughs> oh you spontaneously combusted means you're an alcoholic well, they're like well you drank too much on the eve of jesus's birthday so you deserve to die it's bullshit so, <laughs> Jesus said, "Turn your blood into wine, and fuck, or turn your water and combust." <laughs> Thank you for that lovely episode. Please do not cancel. Um, and that was my story <laughs> on spontaneous human combustion. So I know oh. mine was short. I'm sorry, but. Uh, the fact that Matilda Rooney combusted on Christmas Eve at some point was just crazy to me. And the fact that spontaneous human combustion has a historical record and even has even been happens. mentioned by names such as Charles Dickinson is... Um, like... I'm actually terrified now to drink near a fire, even though I'll probably no. do it next weekend. You're too skinny to worry. I'm not obese, but I am stressed. I mean, I am too, but uh, we would need to have, it's that fat and I don't tissue drink liquor. that really helps you dissolve. Mm -hmm. I think we're good. But it was Hopefully. We'll see. If you know anyone who has combusted, let me know. <laughs> if you have any combustion stories, any, you don't even have to spontaneously, if you purposely combusted someone, you know, just accidentally <laughs> combusted someone, we want to hear about it. Send us an email. Yeah. I, I mean, I want to hear about it. I it guess. can be anonymous. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm taught. Okay. When I say combust, like you accidentally fucking lit your cousin on fire during Thanksgiving because you were playing with a lighter. Okay. Like, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to hear your murder confessions. Oh I want to hear some lighthearted shit my about best you into accidentally. A fire. <laughs> about you accidentally lighting people on fire, but you didn't mean to, but you accidentally did it. But then you put them out and they were safe in the end. Yeah. Yeah. Is that better? I don't know. <laughs> okay, I think I think uh, we've had enough white claw. I think uh, we've said enough things to cancel ourselves for the next decade. Uh, I think that's <laughs> it's time to call it a wrap on the first uh, YouTube video. Video that is not with the red background. So you're welcome. Thank you for joining, Sarah. Amazing story. Thank Cheers you. You as well. To you being a amazing storyteller Cheers. as always. It's always easy to edit. You're just and uh, 
fuck me. <laughs> I have to edit mine. But until next time, guys, uh, be sure to follow us on our socials. Also, leave us five stars. It really helps. But if you want to follow us for images and all the latest and greatest. At R-A-R-W podcast. And yeah, send us all your combustion stories, <laughs> except uh, murder confessions. I don't know if I'm ready to hear Please, that. Please, no, we don't need to be involved. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't need to be called to court. I barely want to go to jury duty. But yeah, if you want to send us an email about really anything at all, feel free to send us one. Red rum and red wine podcast <laughs> at gmail.com. <laughs> and we're going to keep trying this movie thing until this video thing <laughs> until... Uh, until we don't want to try no more so yeah hopefully that but, is never but yeah hopefully it's <laughs> hopefully until, it works hopefully it's until uh bye <laughs> bye, <laughs> bye. <laughs>